Hello and thank you for clicking on my video. In my previous video on the tour I done on my home gym, I did say I'd do something separate on this bell squat that I have. Uh, talking you through how I made it. Um, the main reason why I made one as opposed to buying one was there was three kind of factors that came into it. Uh, I'm based in Dublin, Ireland, so I'm very limited to the amount of companies that supply to us. Uh, I do know I could have got the Rogue Rhino one. Uh, I also, there was a commercial style one that I could have got, which was uh, a leverage type. They're quite big for a single use application and they're over a thousand euros for, for a single use. And just with the space it was taken up, I found it more beneficial to make something. And this is what I came up with. I did have a look online at different styles that people were making and I came up with there's kind of three main styles of belt squat. There's uh, uh, cable loaded which is the, the, the Rogue Rhino and a number of other ones are kind of a cable loaded one where you take the strain from a cable which is attached to plate loaded or any kind of weight. The second type is the leverage style. Uh, most commercial gyms have the leverage type of belt squat. Um, some of them are the home gym type ones are used off like jammer arms or different kind of things that people attach to their squat rack to use as a leverage point and a belt. Uh, it seems to work perfectly, but the one that I saw, I got a chance to use one whilst over in America was a Squat Max MD. Uh, what I liked about that is it, the weight hangs freely underneath you and you also you take the strain of the weight from the top of the squat by ha clipping on and then releasing two handles and then you have the full strain of the, the weight. You squat down with the weight and you pull it back up and lock it up. Uh, and that's what I like, that's a style I liked and that was what I was trying to emulate when I was making this. Um, the biggest problem I had with that was taking the strain of the squat at the top portion of the squat as opposed to just clipping on lifting it up and back down um, so that was my biggest problem is taking the weight at the top and I just find that's more comfortable within a squat you can take it from the bottom if you're happy doing that that's perfect this is the perfect way to do it but what I kind of went along to move moved along throughout my stages was to in order to get that weight at the top of the squat Depending if you're going to make this, it's going to depend on the size of the, the, the power rack that you have. Um, this one here is the Rogue Monster Rack. So I made these, these are the length of these is uh, 1.3 meters uh, in length. That gives them about an inch hanging over the flip down safeties. There are three by four uh, pieces of lumber and there's a 20 centimeter square hole in the center um, for, for the pin to hang at the bottom. So the, the idea with it is, uh, I put a mat down just in case the weight bangs on the ground. Uh, I then put this pin underneath there. I stand up here, one foot here, one foot here. Lean down, clip in. Um, this, uh, this belt here, this is a rogue uh, belt squat, but yeah, Spud Inc make them, there's loads of companies that make them. and clip on and, and then squat. Version 1 just saw me using uh, a, a piece of climbing rope with a carabiner clipping onto this and then squatting, adjusting when I get up to the top. It's not too bad when you're 40 kilos but as the weight goes up it was getting harder to adjust. Then to give myself a little bit of height I got this item here. This is I think mechanics use it for bringing things in and out of under the cars. I was putting this up here and um, it was given about a two and a half or three inch uh, rise uh, when I take the weight up I had a piece of string tied that would pull it out and then I could squat the problem was then in between sets and you had to go down reset put this up onto this wheel it back under it, it was very messy for the the extra two and a half inches that I was getting from it it wasn't worthwhile so that brought me onto my stage that I'm at now which is level stage three or whatever um, it saw me get one of these items here. This is a, a rock climbing piece of equipment. It's called the Petzl Riri. Um, I did say in my previous video, a lot of the stuff I'm using for pulley systems um, and anything like that is rock climbing applications. And, and solely because if it's trusted to hold someone off the side of a mountain, I'm kind of guessing that it should be safe enough for me to use within a home gym environment. And that's, that's the only reason. Um, I find it, it, it works perfectly, uh, there's, there's a number of different types of 
uh, carabiners that I have and different sizes and different size rope. Um, and basically, the, the, this is this moves freely both ways until it, it, it takes the strain and then it locks into place. It works perfectly for what I need it to do. This bit clips onto my belt. This bit clips onto here. And then when the strain is taken, uh, I can adjust to what level I want to take it at, uh, the, strain, the weight at. And then once it's in place, I do have a lever here in case of an emergency, I can just release it like that and it, it drops the weight down. But the idea is when I take the strain, I bring this orange one up, wrap it around my pull-up bar, lift this up, tighten that, loosen this one again, bring it up, tighten this. I'll show you my, me doing it to kind of give you a better visual on it. And then I have the weight at the top of the, the squat. Pull this out, throw the orange one over, and then squat away drop it down and then I can reset without having to get off the platform. If I want to add weight on, then I have to unclip and add weight. But at the moment, I'm limited to, my range of motion will let me, give me great, I have great range of motion if I have something like 40 or 60 kilos on it. Um, as I go up, 120 is the most I can kind of put on it because that brings the weights up to about here. I can get Olympic, uh, I can get competition steel plates and then that will, reduce them by half the size and I'll be able to fit more weight on but 120 kilos works perfectly it goes to about there and that gives me enough range of motion in the squat um, other than that uh, if I had a higher roof it'd be perfect but a competition plates is probably the way I'll have to go if I want to increase that weight so that and this is what it looks like at the bottom it's nothing pretty but it's basically the same Lumber, the 4x3 that I use on the body of the platform, either side, it's spaced out so when I have it lying down, there's no movement side to side. I have two holes drilled either side which allow for these band pegs to clip in and that means that there's no movement forward and back within the uh, flip down safeties. On the inside pieces I went for a kind of a lower profile, a, a 2 by 6 inch piece of lumber which the reason is because that gives more range of motion when the weight's coming up. Um, 20 kilo plates go to about there so it gives just that bit more range and then as an added bit of safety I put these two pieces of steel tube in there just to reinforce it that little bit painted it up and then put it down and what i have it on is i have it on number 10 um this is the rogue monster rack and the flip downs go into that number 10 slot on the pins this is the 90 inch rack so i don't have a whole lot of height here to move it so the 90 inch rack is touching my roof Touching the bottom of the joist on the roof, I do have uh, an extra seven inches to go up. My head fits up to the top of the roof then when I'm at the top portion of the squat. And if you do have a higher roof here, it's a lot easier to make it like or to give you a range of motion. Um, other than that, that's what it looks like. Let's put it down and I'll show you how I squat it. So this is the belt squat, everything set up. Um, I'm standing up on the platform. I do have the pin loaded up at 40 kilos, I have the carabiner attached to the top of the pin and attached to the carabiner is two ropes, it's the orange one and the white one. The white one will always be attached to the belt and the strain is always going to be from that white one and the orange one I have is basically just to adjust the right height that I'm taking the squat at. Uh, I wrap the orange one around the pull-up bar, I tend to do that at the beginning just so I'm not kind of fiddling around when I have the strain at a squat weight. Um, depending on how much weight will determine how many times you need to wrap it around or whatever way you're kind of taking the strain. I go down, I'll drop down as low as I can go, hold this white cable here, just rope, while it's holding the orange one, just so it holds, keeps the weight up. Uh, pull this orange one to take the strain. And then, when it, once I pull that orange one, the strain is gone. I can drop right down. All the strain is on this orange one at this time. I tighten this white one up, and then I can stand up again. And I'm happy with that as a distance. I can fine tune it. 
I've only got two plates, so it's not really too hard to it. You just want to be able to get a good deep squat in. Uh, I throw that orange one away just as safety. And then from there, I can uh, just go straight into a squat. Um, it's easy now because, as I said, there's only two plates. As the weight goes up, you're also taking away the space. As you can see, you probably fit another two plates or three plates before it's going to bang against the bottom of that platform. So that's where the fine tuning comes in. When I'm dropping it, I have two ways. I just pull this lever, there's a little biting point on that lever. It'll just drop the weight violently kind of against the ground. Or I can just drop it right down, release it, and then step out of the belt. And and that is my belt squat thank you so much for watching the video as i said it's a perfect kind of setup for a home gym use it's having it won't have any application in a commercial environment that is as it's rather finicky to use when i did make the platform i did see somewhere hidden in there uh, a reverse hyper i just had to find a way to make the pendulum so i went online had a look at what people were doing online i took a bit of inspiration from that and ended up with an idea to make a pendulum and it's working perfectly for me now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make another video on how I'm using this same platform as a reverse hype or as a reverse hyper and show you how I made the pendulum. And as I said, with this small room that I'm in, if I was to get a bell squad and a reverse hyper, I'd have a, no room. The whole gym would be taken up with a piece of equipment. So as it is now, this small piece of wood lies up against the wall there when it's not in use and the ropes and the belt hang up on the wall there so it's taking up no space in here and it works exactly as i need it to um so if you want to see that video give the channel a subscribe and um, give the video a like if i brought you any value and until the next video from dublin ireland slána walia and thank you